watching over me. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, thank you. Lord, I'm so grateful for your son, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, I ask your Holy Spirit just take over. As I begin to read and study the word and read these awesome Bible stories all over again, I am learning something new in each and every time. So, you're getting a study actually originated from Wednesday night Bible study. Wednesday night Bible study, we're studying the um, book of John. Wow. Wow. We've been studying scripture, different books. This is the first gospel we're studying there. I mean, man, I mean, we're studying Jesus now. It just takes it to a different level. I am so impressed. I am so moved. By the way, Bob, Wednesday night Bible study is for the whole entire church from 7 o'clock, from 8 o'clock. That's one hour. So one hour from 7 to 8 o'clock is devoted to Wednesday night Bible study. Meetings before, meetings after, but 7 to 8 o'clock. We're expecting you all to be in Bible study if you're here on campus and if you can make it. And as we're studying this, I, um, I went ahead and read a very popular story. And that's what we're going to hang out with a little bit this morning. St. John chapter 4, a Samaritan woman. We all know this one. But just, just bear with me. We all know this. I know a lot of preachers preach this, and we all learned this during, you know, in Sabbath school. But let's just hang out here a bit. Awesome story. Title is I Have to Tell. I have to tell. I have to tell. We're going to start with verse 3 of John chapter 4. He, being Jesus, left Judea and departed again to Galilee. Listen to verse 4. Verse 4 says, but he needed to go to Samaria. I just ran over this text so many times. Jesus, the, the, the text says he needed to go to Samaria. So I looked up on the map, on the, on the uh, biblical map, and Judea is down here, and you have the Mediterranean Sea right here. Can you visualize this? Maybe not, but just bear with me. So you have Judea here, but then you have Samaria. Jesus was trying to get to Galilee, so Galilee is up top. So Galilee is north, Samaria is in the middle, Judea is down here. The text says, but he needed to go to Samaria to get to Galilee. First glance, I am thinking that this is a ge geography because he has to get here to, but as I get into the story a little bit more, I'm thinking it's something different, why Jesus needed to go to Samaria. I have to tell. Keep reading, verse 5. So he came to the city of Samaria, which he called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Now Jacob well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary from his journey, sat thus by this well. It was about the sixth hour. Jesus tired from his journey. He has journeyed from Judea. Now he's in Samaria. Jesus is thirsty. He's hungry and he's tired. Notice the text says he is sitting by the well. And we all know the story. Jesus sat there knowing him being who he is. God incarnate. I can't imagine Jesus being thirsty knowing that there's water. Good refreshing water. Why? The fact this is Jacob's well. Jacob actually passed by here before. You know, Jacob actually had one time owned this plot of land. So he's in there. Jesus could have very well used his divinity. Jesus could have looked in the well. I can imagine, you know, Jesus is the creator. You know? Everything on this earth, he created. Everything listens to him. Everything obeys him. You remember how he just calmed down the sea just by one voice? Jesus could very well have looked in the water. That water would have been glad to jump out of there and refresh Jesus. But Jesus didn't use his divinity for himself. It was always for others. Amen. The word says, verse 4, but he needed to go to Samaria. 
think Jesus had another plan, another purpose. We know the story. You know the story. Let's keep going. Verse 5. Sorry, verse 7. The woman of Samaria, here we go, came to draw water. All right. Vision is Jesus being a Jew, the Samaritan woman comes to draw water. Really quick, really quick history. The Jews hated the Samaritans. Even though Samaritans, the Samaritan um, descendants was actually, Samaritans were the descendants of the foreigners who had adopted a form of Israelite religion. So they was actually, you know, part of the same tribe at one point, but they were just the foreigners. But the Samaritans, what they started doing was worshiping idols, incorporating idols into their worship. And actually they'd say, well, we're still worshiping Jesus. These idols are just bringing us to Jesus. The Jews wasn't having it. The Jews wasn't having it. Sorry, we don't have nothing to do with you. I mean, so much so, if there was, if the Jews was, if, if there was a Jew that was, I don't know, beat up and slain or thirsty or hungry, and there was a Samaritan that could have helped them, that Jew was like, no, I don't need your help. You're a Samaritan. You are beneath me. I help you. No, they just had no dealings with them. Look at this. Look, look at this now. Verse 7. The woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus was there. She didn't even pay him no mind, no attention. Also, quick history. At that time, water was known as a gift from God. The Arabs and everyone in the land, they will go out their way to make sure you have water. This Samaritan woman seeing Jesus, she was out going out of it because she knew that Jesus would not take it if she offered anyway. Notice Jesus' question. Moving on. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For the disciples have gone away into the city to buy food. The title is, I have to tell. Verse 9, the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink for me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. All right, so she's beginning to think now. She knows this man already is kind of peculiar, kind of strange. She knew that he was a Jew, and here he is asking me a Samaritan for woman. So, all right, she's, she, she noticed him now. Who is she noticing? She noticing Jesus, God incarnate. This is Jesus with all his divinity. This is Jesus who have not sinned, who there who created the earth. She doesn't even recognize him. <coughs> Let's keep reading. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Something powerful about this living water. But keep going. We're going to keep going. Something powerful about this living water. Remember, the title is I have to tell. I have to tell. Verse 11, the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw well, and well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? <coughs> Notice here, this marriage woman, she's beginning to really ask questions now. She's beginning to be intrigued. When you hang out with Jesus, you have no other choice but to be intrigued. When you end his word, you have no other choice to continue to learn of him. So she's hanging out with him. Now, how do we hang out with Jesus today? In the word, right? In the word. The word was made flesh. In the word. She, uh, this Samaritan woman, she has a leg on me, uh, up on me. She's there worshiping with Jesus, but really don't know it. So much so that I believe Jesus. Lee went to Samaria to stop there as well because he knew he had to talk to her. So she began to be intrigued. She's asking questions. She's hanging out with Jesus. Listen, she says, verse 12, are you greater than our father Jacob? She knows there's something spiritual about him. Everyone in that land knew about Jacob. You know, they knew what Jacob was all about. They knew he was a spiritual man. Listen, she says, are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us his well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Listen to verse 13 and 14. Listen how Jesus answers. 
Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. For whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up in everlasting life. All right. She's really hanging out with Jesus now. She's feeling comfortable. Ah, oh, she's, she's gathering the knowledge. How often do you hang out with Jesus? How often do you have an opportunity to spend time with Jesus? How often do you, or do you neglect it? So here she is, spending time with Jesus. Now Jesus himself, in the flesh, is able to talk to her and tell her about the word and tell her about himself. He says, this water, understand, this water that you drink now, you will thirst. I got something that you will never physically thirst for. Amen. You won't physically thirst. Thirst. If you come to me, he ain't got to, I'm just going ahead, but if you come to me, you learn of me, I have this, 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 this living water, this living water that I will give you and this living water will come into you, but then it will outpour like a fountain of water. So you hang out with me, you know, this Holy Spirit will come into you because you're learning in me, and I will give you this living water, and then it's just going to pour out like a fountain. Seems clear, right? Notice what she says. He also says, springing up to everlasting life. This is about this living water. Who is the living water? Jesus, who is a living water? How often do we hang out with Jesus? If we know Jesus is the living water, how often do we hang out with him and spend time with him? So what if we don't hang out with Jesus and spend time with him? Will we receive this living water, this, this Holy Spirit that will flow? I'm going to keep going. To everlasting life, word says. Verse 15, she still don't understand but she's still there in the presence. She's still there with Jesus. She's still there, but she still don't understand yet because listen to what she says. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I might not thirst, nor come here to draw. She don't understand. But Jesus then is patient and loving because I honestly believe Jesus made this trip, verse 4, but he needed to go to Samaria. I think he needed to talk to the Samaritan woman. Listen, she asked Jesus this question now. I'm telling you, Jesus is smooth. This man was smooth. The way he answers this question, she says, Sir, give me this water. Back up a bit. She knows, she's beginning to experience Jesus even more now. She's begun to experience him like nothing before. Because for once, she said, Sir, you're giving him this respect now. Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come to draw. Jesus, being as smooth that he is, know that he's here to save this woman's life. This is, ah. Ouch. I gotta go to the river. Well, let's go ahead and read it. 16. Jesus' response was Go, call your husband and come here. What do that have to do with giving me some water? But the woman knew. The woman knew. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus is as smooth as he is. Jesus said to her, you have well said. I have no husband. For you have had, how many? Jesus didn't stop there. Oh, Jesus is cutting. Oh, he's going deep. Oh, when you spend time with God, when you spend time with his word, have the word ever pierced you deep, have it ever convicted you so? Now, we have the word made flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit. This woman, she had no chance because she's there with Jesus himself. Jesus says, and he didn't finish. 
Well, you have five husbands. He says, and the one who you now have is the one you shacking up with. And that you spoke truly. Jesus offered her living water, everlasting life. But notice here, he didn't just say, oh, you can have it. Continue on doing what you want to do. Have your five, six, seven, eight husbands, or whatever. Do what you do. Jesus went right to the heart of the matter. Because she knew that if she was to give her all to him, she has to be convicted of some sins. Studying the word, it does that, don't it? Have you ever been convicted of some, of some sins that's been deep in you? Have you? That's what the word does. Amen. All right, now, so, but, she was a spoon, man, I'm telling you. Look, when I read the Bible sometimes, I just start laughing. I mean, I be tripping sometimes because I'm like, Jesus, really? In verse 19, listen to what he allowed this woman to do. She thought she was smarter than Jesus, but Jesus, yeah, Jesus is Jesus. Verse 9, the woman says to him, Sir, girl, that's sir again. Boy, she's trembling now. Spire Penn says, Now at this time, the desire of ages, the chapel, at J the chapter of Jacob's well. She says, she's, she's trembling now a bit. Jesus just rocked her to her core. She knew what she was doing wrong, but she was in it. This is the first time somebody ever called her out on it. So now she's a little shook a bit. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. She's changing this. Look, look how she get off of this. I mean, it was smooth on her part. She says, our father worship on the mountains. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where we ought to worship. She went straight to a dispute that was going on. She didn't want to talk about that no more. She wanted to run, run. Somebody saw me. I want to run. They saw what I was doing. I want to run. I didn't want my sins to be exposed like that. But something about your sins that we learned in Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, this past Wednesday. Real quick, chapter 3. Chapter 3. Actually, I'm going to read chapter 3, verse 17. Notice that Jesus did not condemn this woman. He didn't say, oh, you're going to die because all your husbands and boyfriends. No, he didn't come to condemn. The word says that. Verse 317. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Somebody say amen. amen. That means a lot of us can be dead. But he did not come to condemn. But listen to this. This is something about where we talked about this extensively um, Wednesday night Bible study. Verse 20 says, for everyone practicing evil hates the light. Y'all agree with that? And does not come to the light. Least his deeds should be exposed. How many want your deeds exposed this morning? Raise your hand. How many want your deeds to expose? I think a lot of times we're trying to cover up our deeds. This is what this woman was doing. So she was shook. Her deeds were being exposed by Jesus himself. Keep going. So she tried to get into this debate that was going on, and Jesus allowed her. Jesus used it for his advantage. He allowed it. So the, the debate was that, you know, um, the Jews had built this temple. When they rebuilt the temple, the Samaritans wanted to go in and worship with them in the temple. The Jews said, no, you can't come in here. No, you're a Samaritan. No, my God, you come in here, we're going to kill you. And actually, it was engraved on the wall. Hey, no Gentiles allowed or you would die. So the Samaritans say, okay, we want to worship God too. So they actually built their temple. They built their temple on this mountain. And actually, you can see this mountain. All right, but anyway, their, their temple was destroyed. So this is, and now the debate between the two is, you know, where is the place to serve? Is it with the Jews or with the Samaritan? Jesus, the Samaritan woman, went here because she was being exposed to her sin. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain. I meant verse 20. And you, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where we ought to worship. This is how Jesus responds to him. Respond to her. He says, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you are neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. He just broke down all those walls of contention between the Jews and the Gentiles, between the Jews and the Samaritans. 
He just broke all those walls down, just by that statement. Well, look, he's going to go on. He says, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for the salvation of the Jews. Now, Jesus was not being boastful here. Sometimes, I remember just to read this before, it's like, man, Jesus sounds really boastful. No, he's telling the truth right now. Because the Samaritans, they were still worshiping idols. They had these idols to get to God. So he was saying, you ain't not worship me right. You need to worship like the Jews. For one, not the Pharisees, we're talking about the Jewish. All right? For one, the Jews have given the orders, the law that was given to them. Two, the Jews have who? Who? How is salvation? Through who? Christ. Jesus himself. Jesus was the Jew. So Jesus said, all right, you have me. Keep going. Verse 23. Listen to this now. We're hearing it. It's just curious to come to the title now. I have to tell. But thou was coming, and now it is, Jesus says, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. Amen. Spirit and truth. Are you worshiping with the Holy Spirit leading you? Is the Holy Spirit leading you to the truth? How do you know it's the truth? God, God says, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit and truth. Worship me, not just with the Spirit, but also you have to know the truth. Again, he's talking to this, this Samaritan woman. All right, you go into idols, you don't have the truth. You want this everlasting life, this water that's flowing, this, uh, the, this river, ah, this living water that's flowing, and you want it to flow out like an everlasting fountain? You must worship me in spirit and truth. Know your word. Amen. Know what your word says. Yes. This is what he's saying to the Samaritan woman. 24, God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now here's the woman. By this time, she's getting her composure back a little bit. Because she just laid the whammy on her. So she's getting her composure back a little bit now. Because she was expecting Jesus just to hammer her with it. Just to really hammer her her sins. You sin and you sin. You're no, Jesus didn't do that. He did not condemn her. He's given her opportunity to repent of her sins. Verse 25, the woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming. See, she even knew about the Messiah. She even knew about Jesus. She even knew it. She said, I know the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Notice, Jesus answered him. Jesus says, oh, it's cool to die here. Jesus says, can you do Now, in scripture, we didn't hear this all the time. Jesus didn't always tell people who he really were. Especially the Pharisees. You know, like, you know, he picked his time. But this occasion, remember verse 4? He needed to go to Samaria. He needed to talk to this woman. He needed to hang out with her. She talks about the Messiah. She says, I know the Messiah has come. She will come. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Whoa. Can you imagine that? Whoa. Really? Oh, my. If it was you, if it was you, what your reaction would have been? Would you have run from the darkness, I mean from the light because of your darkness? Would you have scoured away? Would you have immediately started asking God for forgiveness? Well, I ask you, aren't you doing that now? Asking God for forgiveness because you're hanging out with him, right? Carrie, right? Ronald, right? Virgin, right? We're hanging out with him now, right? Listen to what she does. She did something amazing. I have to tell. She experienced Jesus. Jesus just came and convicted her. She just had a personal conversation, you know, 
emotional experience. He talked about feelings in Sabbath school, but also she had a conviction of the truth in her as well. She experienced in Jesus. When you have this true experience from Jesus, have you ever had it before? Have you ever experienced something so much? It just bottled, it just got it. Let me tell you a quick story. I had this, this experience. Um, been hanging out in Wilmington all summer. I think most of you all know. Been hanging out in Wilmington all summer. My wife has been in, doing an interim, an interim position there. So as I try to get there to take the kids, hang out with her, so because she's gone all week out of time. So I, when I could, I would go and spend time with her during the week. All that water, let me try out fishing. So I'm fishing, I'm talking to locals. One local told me, and I'm asking, okay, where the best place to go? He says, go to the south end of, of, of um, Bryanceville. So I go. I got up early that morning to me that because I was like on vacation. Early for me was at seven. So I got up early and I was there fishing. There was nobody around, only this big, gorgeous ocean. And actually, it reminded me of Lake Oswego, uh, Lake Ontario, and Oswego because it was nice and I never seen the ocean calm. The ocean was just calm that morning. I mean, not too many waves. So as I am fishing, I felt something nipple. Then it nibbled again. I just left it alone. It just got lost in the ocean. Then I brought it in. Now, oh, I got something. I brought it in. I've been trying to catch a flounder for a while. And I was like, no, I can't be a flounder. No, I don't want it. No, it can't be. Now look. Now hold it. Guess what it is? A flounder. I mean, those, I don't know if you've ever seen a real flounder, but when you that eat fish, that fried piece of fish that's on your plate, that's not how it really looks. Actually, kind of oval, it's different looking. So when I'm holding up this fish dock, I'm excited because I'm going to catch a flounder. I'm looking for somebody to tell. Look, I got a flounder. I don't know nothing about fishing, but I got a flounder. There was no one would tell, but I just had to tell someone. So what else don't you think I did? I pulled out my phone. I'm on Facebook. This one, this is a flounder, man. So I turned it around and I tried to hold the fish. My hand slipped off of it. It was all slimy. I was going to put my hand in his mouth and his teeth all in there. So I'm trying to, you see the fish, I'm kind of holding it. Like I'm not scared. I'm trying to take, look, I call a flounder. I just had to tell someone. Amen. This is the way this American woman was experiencing Jesus. I have to tell. I have to tell. I have to tell what Jesus just has done for me in my life. Someone else needs to experience this. I have to tell. Amen. Verse 28. Wait a minute. You remember Jesus' first question to the Samaritan woman? What was his first question to her? His first request. Can I have drink water? He was really thirsty, wasn't he? The woman had a pot of a pot. To, to draw water from. I don't think she ever drew the water. Jesus ain't never got the water yet. Look what the woman did. The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the women, this woman, she had an issue with men, I'll tell you. Five and one, and for some reason, maybe I don't know, give her the benefit. Maybe it was the elders of the church. I don't know. I don't know. It could have been the man that she was with. I don't know, but for some reason she went to the man because she still had to tell someone. It was so much important to her, she left her water pot. She has not had anything to drink. She, she walked there to the, to the, to the well, and she left, left it. Do you think Jesus is thirsty? Oh, man, I just went to this woman, I don't have no water. It's something when we share the word of God. Listen to this. Disciples come on the scene now. Listen to this. Disciples says, oh, um, Master, I want to, we got some food for you and some water. Right now, Jesus, inspired pen says, Jesus just, he's just in this, this radiant. He's worshiping God. He is, he is filled with the spirit because of what just happened. Jesus' ministry has not always been successful. You remember when he went home to Nineveh? Um, and they did not receive him. So his ministry was not always successful when he spoke to the masses. So this one person strengthened him, Spire Penn says in the Tsar of Ages. It, it strengthened him in his ministry because he's seen the power of the Holy Spirit. 
So when the disciples see him, Jesus, got some food for you. This is what Jesus says. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Keep reading. Do you not say, do you not say there are still four months and then come to the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the field. Boy, I tell you, this woman was on fire because she experienced Jesus. She went to the whole town and she just told the people. Jesus now is talking to the disciples. Jesus says, look, yeah, it's about four months of harvest time. You can look out and see the wheat's about ready. But, but, but look a little further now. All right, you're looking to the right. Look to the left here. Let me show you why I am, why I'm not hungry no more for this physical food, why I'm not thirsty no more for the thirsty drink, because you don't know what I've been talking to, who I've been witnessing to. Look, look, just the results of from one person I witnessed to. One person. A whole town is coming. The whole town is coming because those men says, I want to hear. I want to hear Jesus for myself. Because she says, come see a man who told me all things I've ever did. I have to tell. Are you telling? I back up, back up. Are you experiencing it? I, I am willing to say that you, if you're not telling, is maybe because you're similar to me. Things get in your way to distract you from truly standing in the Word. Problems, situations, whatever. Causing you not to spend time with Jesus. Even you a little bit like me. If you're really not spending time with Jesus, it's so hard to tell someone about Jesus. It's so powerful to do. I have to tell. I'm serious. I'm telling this to me. All right, This is me saying it. I have to tell. So that means I have to talk about it. Experience Jesus for myself. You know what? As a church, I don't, uh, there are some good things that's going on in this church. I remember one of my first Bible studies, I was studying with Sister Sheila. I remember getting to study with Sister Sheila you know, four or five years ago. We were getting to those Bible studies, I have to tell. She, she began to listen and she began to talk because, and I don't I hope she don't mind me saying, but she was a convert from Jehovah's Witness. So she knew the word. And you know, I can tell as we were studying. But you know what? After the studies, I remember her saying, I have to tell. So what she began to do, telling, men's ministry, discovery, I have to tell. I remember studying with my brother Carlos Caraway. He's out there and he's back there in the, in, in the treasure's room. I remember studying with Carlos. And it is nothing I have done. I'm learning too. I'm learning too, all right? As I study, as I'm studying with Carlos, I remember how this brother drove, he was commuting to um, Virginia. From Zebulon from, to, to Virginia. I don't know, three times a week. On those times, he would come from Virginia to my house for Bible study. Every week. And as we study, I remember, I can see him. I remember Carlos was saying, I have to tell. That study went from him to his wife, to his mother, who's not an Adventist, to his wife's friend. Now there's a Bible study going on in his house every so often. I have to tell. I remember Bob Shockley. I remember him telling me, and he just moved to the area, I really don't know too many people in his neighborhood. He says, Tim, I have to tell. I have passed out in my neighborhood 90 or so books going door to door. I didn't knock on all the doors, I just made put it down, but I have to tell my brother David King. I remember going into those studies. David, David was a challenging study. Why? Because he asked so many difficult questions that threw me off. It's like, man, I need to go ask Rick Major on this one. I don't know. But as he began to study and read on his own and been ministered by his family, David says, I have to tell. You know, there's a Bible study going on in his house every week. I have to tell. What are you doing? Who are you telling? There are so many people I know that's, that's, that's telling. There are so many people that's not. 
This is power finance. I'm telling you, power finance, when they reported in the Bible study, they reported that they're all about evangelism. They're, the, the kids are going to be going door to door. They're going to be evangelizing. I have to tell. I have to tell. Are you telling? I don't like to use this term because sometimes it gives me the big head. As you know, I don't need it to be bigger anymore. <laughs> well, as your head elder, I am not telling. I'm telling you, teach Sabbath school. Man, you know how many people that comes across my way? I can pass out a business card, bam, real quick. Use me. But far as telling about Christ, I have not always told them. Is it because of my lack of relationship with Christ? I have to tell. Amen. Christ is coming back soon. Yes. I have family members that need him. Amen. I have co-workers, colleagues that need him. I have church members that need him. I have to tell. It's an easy way to tell. You don't always have to go knock on the door. You don't always have to give a Bible study. Um, Jesus talks about in the text about being sore, um, sore, and those who reap. Both, both have told. Either you sow or you reap from the harvest. The easy way to do this is just pass on a simple issue. This is the great hope. This great hope we have. Mountains of this, um, and it's an excerpt of the great controversy. I have to tell. I wouldn't look at this as a piece of literature like I can give out. I like to think of this as maybe penetrating one house with maybe two or three or four people in this house. And in that house, as visitors could come to the house. Or maybe this person who have been searching but need a little bit more. I have to tell. We have plenty of these. I ask if you have not been telling like you should because you're very similar to me. I pray that you change immediately. We are giving just three. Three per person. If you want it, no pressure. But for me, I have to tell. Just pass it out. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. I have a friend that has a computer shop in High Point. Elder of the Lexington Church. In his computer shop, you know, he business. But he has a stand with great controversies and desires of ages that he has to pledge often. Because he understands, yes, I need to make money, but I have to tell. Amen. Amen. No matter what you're doing, the business you're in, the walk of life, I have to tell. I have faltered a whole lot. I have faltered a bit. And it's no excuse. My wife had accepted this new position in, in Wilmington. And as she was, and as a, as a, as a uh, manager of position, so she's getting phone calls all the time. I'm on the phone, and when we're driving, I'm always on the phone, you know, talking business. Now she's on the phone talking business. It's like, wait a minute, we both can't be doing this at the same time, driving. Once I wasn't on the phone, and I, someone called, I think it happened this week, one of the employees called her um, sick, or whatever, the, I think, the husband was healed, and I'm trying to eavesdrop. Again, my wife is in a management position. So the woman is calling in, I can't be in for whatever reason. I have to tell. This right here struck me. I was, I was about to get on my wife, but the Holy Spirit told me no. As my, and I could hear the lady talking a little bit, yet yeah, she sounded sad. So I, I heard my wife says, yes, I'm sorry about your husband, and, and on and on and on, yes. Management position. Someone calling in to work and say, I can't come for no reason. My wife says, Can I pray with you? I have to tell. I have to tell. I don't care what position, what I have to tell. We can start by this. If you're not, now maybe you're already doing, that's fine. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the ones that's like me, that allow this world to get in our way, that world we're not telling like we are. If you want to start by a simple way, 
They're in the wall. Now, if you take it, if there's a tape outside and a deacon's already in the minutes truck, then you only get three. The reason why three, I don't want you to go ahead and beside yourself and gather 15 and 14 sit in your house for a whole year. So just three, just three. Just three, the deacon's instructed you they will give you three of these. Read it first. Make sure it's the truth, all right? I'll just be taking my word. Read it first, then pray over them. And ask the Holy Spirit, show me how to pass the great hope out. I have to tell. Amen. Amen. In closing, this woman, Samaritan woman, she was convicted. She knew she had to get her life right. She had to change. I think there's someone in here who knows they have to give their life right. They have to change. We're not trying to get it all in your business or nothing, but we just want, don't want to shut those doors for our appeal. I'm not appealing to the masses. I'm appealing to someone, 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 some boy, some girl, some adult, child, old, someone, someone needs to learn of Jesus a little bit more. Someone needs to come back home. Someone needs to embark in some serious Bible studies. Someone even have a desire, a desire to go down and water the grave to be baptized. I know it is. I mean, if you do the numbers and the I mean, statistics, you someone else. But the question is, who is brave enough to say in front of the world and say, I want everyone in the church to pray for me because I want to live for Christ. Is there one? Eyes are closed. You're praying. Where are you? I know you're in here. Where are you? Where are you? So everyone in here is ready to see Jesus. I just, I just want to get a little closer. This is not a notch in my belt. This is so we can pray for you. Elders are on standby. We have Bible workers on standby. Deacons are on standby. Got to give my all to you. Got to give my all to you. Anyone else? So you ready? So you good? Good? Come on, friend. I think. Oh, man, this. Doesn't matter. Man. I just want to be a Christian. Amen. Take away these titles. I don't care. I just want to be a Christian. Who else said I need to give my life to Christ right now? Right now. I'm not asking for a recommitting. No, no, no. I'm not looking for masks here. No, no. I got to give my life. And I believe Shelly with all my heart. I believe Shelly with all my heart that she wants to give her life to Christ. I know she does. I hear it was a night Bible study. Praise God. Is there another? And I'll say she also has a desire for baptism. But we're going to, the Holy Spirit's going to work all that out. Is there another that says, I got to give my life? I, 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 I want to. Doug, if you will, just play softly for the next. Oh, I'm sorry. Not, not Doug, I'm sorry. Let's see. Uh, Olga, if you will, play softly. If you will, just the next three minutes. I want to hear my own. I don't care how old you are or young you are. God doesn't care how old or young you are. He doesn't care. He just wants a full commitment. I want to give my all to you. Is there another one? I know there's another one. I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. I gotta give my life to you right now. I have my, not been doing what I should have been doing. I need this conversion. I, as I've been studying, God has been just been changing my life. I need to go a little step a little further. Is there another one? Come on. It's only two more minutes. So we good? So what is it ready? So we are ready to meet Jesus 
right now. We're good. No more need of baptism. No more need of Bible studies. Everyone is good. Everyone. Everyone. I pray to God that this is true. I pray that everyone here in the sight of my voice is ready to meet Jesus because we have experienced him and we are sharing him. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you bless each book that goes out. Lord, I pray your spirit for God. Lord, I thank you for my brother Trevor, elder Trevor. I thank you for my sister. I'm um, Shelly. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Lord, God bless. Be with us, Lord, as we commit our whole lives to you. Lord, forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Thank you for forgiving us our sins. Well, Lord, we want to go further now. So, Lord, we thank you. Again, Lord, I ask that you be with each individual that take hold of one of these people as they go out and minister with us, as they have to tell. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit will be with them. And in Jesus' name, we do pray.